It certainly looks that way, and you're right to say it was tense for a variety of reasons, not least because uh, Joe Biden feels that this has gone on long enough now. He's under political pressure at home in the U.S. Uh, his own supporters are calling him to do more, uh, and that's clearly what he did in that conversation, much shorter than the usual conversations between the two men, less than 30 minutes apparently, but he had a big message to pass on. You know, he wanted specific, concrete, measurable steps to be taken, and he wanted them to be taken in the immediate uh, days ahead, and already it seems that uh, Israel has got the message, although uh, the, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, as they say. Uh, but at the moment, you know, as you said in the report, Israel has decided to uh, open the port of Ashdod, which is about 40 kilometers uh, to the north of the Gaza Strip, to humanitarian aid coming in by sea. Uh, and also to open, this is really important, uh, the Erez crossing in the north. It, it was for a, lo a long time the only way uh, the Palestinians could get in and out of uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, so it's a big crossing, and if the Israelis facilitate trucks going in and out through Erez, that should make a big difference to the amount of aid getting in. Uh, the other crossing is uh, down in the south, uh, Kerem Shalom, uh, which is ma making itself more available than it has been until now to Jorda Jordanian lorries coming across Israel to get into uh, to the Gaza Strip. So those are three steps which, if applied immediately, uh, could make a significant difference to what is happening on the ground. It doesn't do anything, however, of course, about the fact the World Central Kitchen, which is the biggest operator after UNRWA, the United Nations Palestinian refugee organization in the Gaza Strip, has stopped operating at the moment because its operatives, because its workers were killed. Yeah, uh, so concrete steps, it appears like they could make a big difference, but still the situation so dire in Gaza that it seems like there can't be enough aid to get into the Strip, can there? I think that's absolutely right. If you look at the, the average for the number of trucks getting into the Gaza Strip uh, in March, it was 159 per day may sound like a reasonable amount, uh, but if you bear in mind that before the, the war started, the around 450 to 500 trucks were going into Gaza, uh, and the situation then was nothing like what it is today. Uh, this, the, the, the strip has been turned into rubble. Uh, the people have no food. We're talking about imminent famine, famine indeed in some places already, according to the U.S. State Department. So the amount of aid that is needed is colossal. Uh, and the amount that's getting in is far from colossal. Uh, so although the, it's good that the Israelis have decided to move on the Erez crossing and Ashdod and Kerem Shalom, they also have to take steps to make sure that they facilitate uh, the, the transfer of trucks from Israeli territory uh, and Egyptian territory into the Gaza Strip. At the moment, they put in so many administrative barriers into getting across, so many checks into getting across, that the queues are enormous. I think that's one of the things that the Americans in particular will be pressing upon Israel.